my. Are you truly the Prince of Litany? No, no, you must be some sort of divine being. No mortal could be so perfect, yet here I see you, and... Ah. Judging from your expression, I'm laying it on way too thick. Sorry about that. Let me start again. Higher. I'm Prince Lysander, the youngest child of the King and Queen of Reldor. I have been meaning to come visit the Litnian Palace for some time, but I was a bit busy with personal studies of mine. Nonetheless, here I am. If I may, you're not quite what I expected. Though I'm already quite taken with you, I had heard that you were endlessly cheerful. Yet I see you now, and you look... Well, you look rather morose. Have I come at a bad time? You're not grieving, are you? Ah. A close friend's departure is difficult. I understand that. Perhaps I should come back at a later date, or at least wait in, until another time to begin my courtship of you. I do intend to court you, yes. Not only are you one of the most handsomest men I have ever had the pleasure of seeing, but I do believe we would be quite the pair. Though you have turned away every suitor that's come to you, I was told that you wouldn't be so quick to get rid of me. Oh, I'm afraid I can't tell you who told me. I made a promise to keep that information to myself until you've made a decision on whether you will allow me to court you. No, no don't, don't decide yet, Prince. I don't like the thought of you making a rash decision so soon. Especially because I can see in your eyes that you might not be ready for proper courtship. So, I'll try to keep flattery to a minimum. It may be difficult. You don't have to apologize. I don't mind spending time with you as nothing more than a new friend for the time being. I'm glad you're interested in making a friend too. Truth is... Ah. Uh, you have quite the reputation. Not just the kindness, but your reputation as somehow also being heartless, or perhaps taken. You've rejected so many suitors, people talk, even about one such as you. Don't worry, I'm not one to reveal the secrets of others. Anything you tell me, in confidence, I shall take to the grave. It was him, wasn't it? The friend who left. You hide your emotions well, but not perfectly. It's rare to find anyone who can do so perfectly, especially without the use of magic. Personally, I don't even bother anymore. My thoughts and opinions aren't going to mean much unless there's a great tragedy in my family. I'm the youngest of nine children. I'm not even in line for the throne. Not that I would want to rule my country. I'm much happier being able to study my days away. Would you show me the gardens? I've heard they're quite relaxing. Thank you. I admit, I've been curious about what plants grow best here in the capital of Litany. I'm so used to the gardens back home in Eurobia. The garden is lovely, but I suppose I was hoping it would be more exotic. Have you given it thought? Whether you'll allow me to court you or not. Not to rush you, of course. You have... 
And what have you decided? Yes. I mean, uh, you can trust that I will be devoted to you, but please don't expect me to choose between you and my studies. I couldn't live without my studies. Well, I study a lot of things. Botany is one of my interests, but it's kind of an outlier. I tend to prefer to study literature. Whether it's an epic adventure novel, or a tale of romance and treachery, a collection of heartfelt poems, bone-chilling horror, a detailed autobiography, or a book of gentle fairy tales. I'm all about it. I've actually been working on a novel myself. I haven't finished my first draft of it, but I'm hoping to get it published under a pseudonym. I'd like to have the anonymity I've never gotten because of my royal lineage. Ah, uh, yes, I... I shall tell you who suggested I come to court you, if you still want to hear it. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you figured it out. Yes, it was Andal. You're as sharp as I hoped. Although it's interesting you called him Sir Andal. He's not a knight at the moment. He made that quite clear when he spoke to me. The circumstances of our meeting. Oh, it's, it's, it's kind of a funny story. But you'll have to promise to keep it a secret, alright? I had snuck out of the palace, just to get away for a bit, while pursuing the public library, which was much wider of a range of fiction compared to the ones in the palace. I happened to see someone staring at a shelf of romance novels, as if they had disappointed him one too many times. Now I'm a naturally curious person, so I asked him why he seemed to be so frustrated. Well, he recognized me on sight. I suppose it didn't help that there was a portrait of the royal family in the same room, but I digress. He asked me if I was supposed to be out and about on my own, unguarded, and I said, no. I was not. I also said that the library we were in has become a sort of haven for me, a place where I can just be myself without disappointing anyone. He seemed taken aback by my candle, but he recovered as best as he could and asked me if there were if I knew anything about how to ease someone else's heartbreak. I I didn't but I chose not to say that out loud. Instead, I asked him for details. He was reluctant, of course, but I'm persuasive. It's one of my better qualities. He told me that he had broken the heart of his dear friend, someone who he cared deeply for, but not in the way the person had wanted. Would you be surprised to hear that I have done the same? My best friend asked me if I would allow her to court me, and I was not particularly tactful in my reaction. I turned her down, quite brutally, without explanation, quite brutally in retrospect. I told her that I would never be interested in someone like her. It was true, but... She took it to mean her personally, or appearance. I had meant because she is a woman, and my interests are reserved for men. I couldn't do anything to mend our friendship except allow for time to pass. A year went by, and she came to visit for the first time since then. I could do nothing to fix my past mistake, but I could clarify it. I told her I could never love a woman that way. 
and she understood. We're still rebuilding our friendship. Yes, well, I told Andor that, and it seemed to help. He asked me if I had any interest in you, and I told him truthfully that I admired your beauty for a long time. Yes, I came here because he asked me to. You've rejected a lot of suitors these past months, so I didn't really have the nerve to try, but if a close friend of yours thinks we'd get along nicely, then who am I to stay away? He told me what has happened between you. The way he'd been oblivious to your crush. The way you'd likely taken his stammering as reciprocation. The way you confessed your love. The way he rejected you. And the way you told him he wasn't broken. Even though you were hurting. I think he saw something in me. I'm nothing like him, in appearance and personality, but he knows you well. I trust his judgement here. He wanted me to tell you that he's going to be travelling to South Litany, the tundra of Archestra. He wants to see the auroras. He wants to feel the cold. He wants to see the white wolves that he's heard can be found there. Unite will return one day. He promises he will not die before seeing again. Believe in him. The conversation got very somber for a while there, <laughs> and I've spoken quite a lot. Why don't you tell me about your interests? 